welcome to Outlander's Guide to Lidaria, session 34. Hi. Oh my goodness. Hello. Hey. 34. Hello. The number keeps growing. It, it, weird how it does that. It just keeps going up. When will it peak? It's got to pop. I, I don't want it to pop. It has to crash eventually. It can't no. just keep going up. No. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, it's got to have like a rollover number, a uh, stack overflow. It's okay, we can just do a session 256. Yep. Oh. We'll just do a season two, and then everyone can calm down. Mm, <laughs> that's a good idea. The sequel. That's what they do with comic books. Whenever things are getting dull, they just print a new number one. <laughs> the movie adaptation. The sequel, which is the, the post time skip. Or everyone mm -hmm. has a beard, including Pontifex, and also Pip is now a teenager. Yeah. And they have, like, children. <laughs> everyone the voice is cracking <laughs> even more than usual. <laughs> Pip is hitting is like, in the prime of puberty. Every time something goes wrong, he just punches a hole in the closest wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, we all That's remember what those days. Yep. Well, <laughs> we, we all know. He will definitely have a romance arc. If you did not punch a hole in at least five objects, you were not a normal kid. You did not go through puberty. <laughs> it just hasn't hit you yet. You might be 30, but it's coming. Oh, so and that's what was wrong with my dad. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he uh, just didn't hit puberty oh, yet. No. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we move on to today's recap? <laughs> Thank you to whoever volunteers to do today's recap. I mean, I guess. All right. Could do boulder parchment shears. Take it from <laughs> <me>. <laughs> yeah, well, the next time it comes around for me and I decide, I don't want to. I'm going to make <laughs> other people do boulder parchment shears. The winner gets to do the recap and I'm not playing. Uh, okay, I, this could be interesting uh, if my puppy will stop barking. Do you happen to have some extremely melodramatic music? Melodramatic? Yeah, the music that makes it feel like it's raining outside and someone has died. Uh, Pontifex's theme? <laughs> sure. That was some shade. Sure. Well, I mean, it's it's... Uh, no, that works. That's that's fine. I'll, that's there's, fine. There's there's the piano <laughs> from from Brooks. That's also pretty. I'd have to upload mm. it otherwise. Y you need to consult me ahead of time on <laughs> no, I, It just occurred to me we could just make this more dramatic. Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> this is just an excuse to hear my theme song. <laughs> <laughs> it's my that's Brooks. <laughs> okay. The group decided to leave the Mama Bas too, who we named Mimi, as it has always been, to a group of other Arma Bas too that we found to the south. Uh, Casimir and Brooke had a bit of a moment overnight about Casimir's lycanthropy secret, uh, about their time with the phantoms and what it means to be a phantom, and Brooke receives a, a present, a gift. <laughs> From his friend Casimir, a magical belt that explains how his uh, inferior frame is able to perform such amazing tasks. And now Brooke is also no longer an inferior being. Orm really? tells us of an extra dimensional tower that him and Jamuel used to live in, with doors leading to and from all over Ladaria, uh, particularly locations of some other doors, uh, one that is east of Simleilan and another one near the lake to the west. A Pontifex became increasingly annoyed at the group's lack of knowledge regarding the fundamental conjuration and transmutation teleportation magics and then tries to snap mosquitoes out of the air with his mouth as he's wont to do and we follow the path to the northeast and we find signs of traps an armabastu impaled on a stake <laughs> and a young armabastu tied to a post by his ankle 
which provided a far more complex logistical nightmare for the group than it should have. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we reunited with Mimi, and we, we, we met her baby, Bibi. And Pip is established as uh, PP. A job well done. <laughs> or so we thought. And we continue our way, finding signs of being tracked by our werewolf adversary. And after Casimir picks up sounds of us being stalked at the camp, uh, we prepare for battle. And Casimir circles around. He snuck off on his own, the, the idiot, to flank them. And we didn't know it would end up like this. We didn't know. Uh, but then he brought out... Oh god, he brought out Fortis. We were ready for a fight. We were so excited for a fight. And then our hopes were dashed. We found out that uh, Talix is some kind of uh, omniscient precognitive being. He studied a divination or some such. He knew, <laughs> but he didn't tell us. But he brought out Fortus. He was rough and worn, and he went on to explain that he can't go home. He describes some physical changes or some such that uh, led us to believe that he is also afflicted by lycanthropy, but distinctly different from Casimir's because of uh, a willingness factor or something. I don't know if it was left vague, but it seems like Casimir wanted it and Fortus, he, he didn't want this. Uh, so Pip, in his benevolence, decides to try removing the curse uh, with magic. Uh, finding the self-confidence within himself uh, from memories of his granny, which is also confusing because I feel like she's also the person that drags him down at every possible turn. But I guess in this particular moment, when it comes to removing not his curses, uh, she's on his team. She's very supportive. Uh, and it worked. It, uh, or at least it seems to have worked based on Fortis's return to his uh, inferior physical abilities. Uh, he tries to lift up our beefy brook and uh, failed laughably. And he was happy about it for whatever reason. Uh, they hug uh, while Pip is feeling jealous at uh, the ease of his curse removals. Uh, and then we decide to keep him with us, uh, take him to Urka or Simleilan, whichever one comes first. And that was how it all happened. Thank you. Amazing. That was that was touching. This is at someone's eulogy. I haven't decided whose. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out this session. Probably Fortis's. Oh boy. Here you go. We're know. not out of the woods yet. The wrong person talks shit to Fortis and it turns out Pip is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> could, could be you. Could be me. <laughs> Hi. We can just bask in the music for, <laughs> for yeah, a little it's good. It's good. I like it's your so theme good. song. It's so relaxing, which is so wildly out of character. God, I want to play this RPG so badly. Right? <laughs> okay. Now, as for your progress uh, uh, across the jungle, um. Okay. You should be between two to three days away from the colony of Urka, um, about twice as far away from Simlielan. <clears throat> uh, I believe you are headed further south from uh, from today on. I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have left your minis. Here, I I think. Yeah, you put okay. it in the bag. 
Ah, as this is where we, we left off last time. Please put down your bow, Fortis. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I literally can't. Fortis also has not decided whose eulogy it was. <laughs> <laughs> Except it can't be Pontifex because he gave the eulogy that would break the canonical. So everyone, everyone else is open season. Maybe you were astral projecting. <laughs> Maybe it was Duchess. Mm. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to do tonight? Uh, Fortis's arrival had uh, interrupted your sleep. Um, so if you just want to go back to sleep, that would be perfectly acceptable. Yeah, this was just the first watch, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Pit might, just... Pit might sit with Fortis for a bit if Fortis isn't feeling too sleepy yet. Oh, but Fortis if he is, is then... wide awake. <laughs> Pip will, will sit with him then. Okay. Mm. He'll be happy to hang out. Is there anything in particular you want to talk about or just spend time with him? Um, I, I guess, like, you know, just to bide the time as they're as they're you know going through the rest of the watch and uh pip would just talk to him about his family about alien about growing up and pip's just curiously listening to anything fortis might talk about uh until eventually it gets a bit too late and he falls asleep Okay, also, I didn't stop this music. Stop! <laughs> oh, it's, no it's still full fine. <laughs> it's sleepy music. <laughs> and, and it's long is... rest music. <laughs> um, ooh, ouch. Yes. I, uh, Pip, Austin, uh, yeah? I'll take an insight check from you. Okay. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> looks hungry. <clears throat> okay. Um, Pip Fortis is, uh, uh, is happy to uh, talk about this and that with you. Um, generally, of the two, it was his younger brother who was the most... Uh, uh, energetic and the one who is most happy to be uh, to be really just just constantly talking at any possible occasion uh, his mother even occasionally having to ask him to please keep quiet for a few minutes um, uh, Fortis remains uh, I engaged in this conversation with you for a while but he seems um, while he seems healthy uh, it's clear that there is a lot still on his mind and uh, uh, it might take some time before he's back to just being fully himself. Um, the experience he just went through is clearly on his mind. All right. Pip, I, I think Pip knows how to, to help in this circumstance. And so... Um, after Fortis sort of curls up and goes to sleep, he's going to put uh, one of his talking dolls next to him. Uh, the <laughs> one that will say, do you want to keep me? When he wakes up. Okay. And uh, then Pip will go over to his own corner and fall asleep as well. Alright. Um, Brooke and Casimir, the two of you are also uh, good for the night? It was kind of your uh, watch. Uh, uh, when... Yeah. We good. Okay, okay. I do good. think that uh, before Pontifex goes to to, uh, he's going to to go over to Brooke. Uh, uh, that gift that you got, uh, this belt thing you are wearing. Uh, would you mind if I gave it a look over during my time? Uh, you don't have to. Uh, I don't know if it's a term you understand. You don't have to uh, break your bond to it or anything of the search. I just want to uh, look at it. Hmm. There is a bit of value that there could be found. 
course. Just be careful that you don't break it. I'll take off the belt. Frankly, I don't know if I could, even if I wanted to. <laughs> don't underestimate yourself. Oh, I will. <laughs> and he gives him the belt. Take good care. Uh, you'll have it back in the morning. And Pontifex is then going to go to sleep and spoon the belt. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, what? It is not my turn for watch yet. I am the last okay. watch, so I will do it on my watch, but I didn't want to wake you up. That's rude. <laughs> and I definitely don't want to, like, come over and take off your belt in your sleep. That's even weirder. <laughs> Nothing if not a gentleman. <laughs> I'm glad you're so considerate, Pontifex. Okay. Only I mean, sure. <laughs> <clears throat> Anything else I need to know that happens during the night? Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess on Pontifex's, uh, on his watch, he's gonna, uh, I guess like identify on the belt and also like just give it a, a good magical look over and see if there's any possible spells he can glean from it. that I don't have to know immediately because it would take a long time it would take a long time sure uh, but I, he's I, gonna I get started to, on that I have to figure these things out um but as for the identify um well, that would be that would be simple enough. Uh, so you'd be able to verify with complete uh, certainty that uh, this belt of ill giant strength sets the strength score of the attuned user to 21 and has no additional positive or negative effects. Okay. It doesn't inflict the wearer with lycanthropy. Not to the results of your identify. Mm. Okay. Okay. Then we can move on to your final. Ah, uh, day of traveling through the jungle. Where... Uh, oh, everyone take your minis. I'm gonna be kidnapping these two. I don't know. Uh, that was the it? same. Yes. How are your um, your ration situations? Are they good? I've still got plenty. Mm, I have three days left. Taika has two days left. I think I forgot to mark mine off last. So let's say I have left. <laughs> <laughs> Put this away. <clears throat> Pontifex Prime. This is not uh, even my final four. <laughs> um, the following morning, you resume the you, res you resume your journey with uh, uh, an additional person in your group. Uh, following you for the time being, uh, um, with his with his curse lifted, uh, while Fortis is doing better uh, physically and mentally, um, it also means that he is no longer able to survive a journey like the one he just did uh, on his own, um, and uh, so it is under your protection that he simply comes with to your uh, to your next uh, destination <clears throat> and it is around uh, uh, at around noon and that's 
the moment when you find out that it's noon, uh, when a jungle comes to a sudden end, uh, the undergrowth initially becomes a little bit thicker, and as you carve your way out, uh, the, pl the vegetation ends uh, almost entirely abruptly. And you're left with a with an open wide view of the green uh, um, uh, of the green landscape uh, directly to the south of it. Uh, gentle hills uh, um, on, in every direction to the south, southeast, southwest, um, and a bright, clear sky welcome you back out of the jungle. <clears throat> Let's see... 15. Okay. It's... Um, it's nice to be back in the sunlight. Uh, um, you find yourselves uh, <clears throat> taking off a couple of... Uh, um, some of your clothing is you're no longer in that really hot and unpleasantly humid area. And the sunlight feels gentle, almost almost cold in comparison. It is very shortly after you've made your way out of the jungle, merely a, an hour, an hour and a half of uh, traveling to the south west, if I remember my map correctly. Uh, yeah. My own map. Um, do you come across a a single traveler you're not on a road at this point uh, um here we go you're not on a road at this point you're just uh, um following uh, pontifex's map to figure out roughly where you are and where you're going um this the this landscape is uh, doesn't really have uh, major landmarks that you can use to figure out where you are. And so it's unusual to come across <clears throat> anyone uh, here in the middle of nowhere. But even from a distance, you can tell that this man, uh, at this point, uh, uh, a few hundred feet away from you, is a Yavelsi. Uh, you can tell from his exceptional height uh, and from uh, the, the way his feet are shaped and the way he walks just on the tip of his toes. Um, but as you, as you come a little bit closer, um, uh, you notice that his appearance is unusual for a Yavelsi. Um, his kind normally has this, uh, um, uh, reddish colored skin and hair and box also the same color, but, uh, he is, uh, his skin is not just white, but almost like a bleached white color, um, entirely devoid uh, of any coloration to it. Uh, even his, his hair is white, and as you get a little bit closer, you can see that his vox are painted. Um, the, the only part of him that, uh, that uh, uh, has color, uh, they're painted in, in stripes and dots. Uh, he was... As you spotted him, as you spotted him, he was moving uh, uh, eastward but as he also sees you he stops um. if you were to continue in the direction you were going you would pretty much just walk up to him yeah uh those vox that you said that are painted with like stripes and like dots and stuff uh is this is the designs reminiscent of the rock? Ha! Huh. <clears throat> Do you get closer? Uh, I think upon seeing that, and I, th I think this is m maybe Pontifex making the connection too, because it makes sense. Yeah, he's just kind of like straight up walk up in this person's face if that's what I have to do to <laughs> get like enough detail. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think like the other group would clearly see that that glint in Pontifex's eye that he is hyper fixated onto something. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. For those of you who have met the Avelsi before, I think the uh, the group uh, uh, together as a whole has only met one before. But Pat Pip has had plenty of encounters with them, and I think 
it would make sense for Talix and Tech uh, and Brooke. Yeah, everyone but Pontifex. Uh, to have encountered other Yvelsi before. And generally, they tend to travel with uh, uh, some kind of cart, if not straight up a, a, a caravan, as uh, pretty much all the Yvelsi on the peninsula are merchants, but <clears throat> this man is on his own. Um, he doesn't have a, a, an animal carrying anything. He just have he just has a small uh, satchel just over one sh one shoulder. Um, and uh, yeah, Pontifex, you go all the way up in his face. Uh, you stare at him in his bright, uh, um, very very pale coloration of blue eyes, um, and he just. He doesn't flinch, he doesn't pull back, he doesn't smile either, he just looks back. Uh, Pontifex, the, the way his fox are colored do remind you of Pip's stone. Well, Pip's. Oh. Whether you consider it Pip's or, or not. In my stone? <laughs> <laughs> no, the stone that I found and gifted to him. Mm. Well, and then you fought yeah. over. Eh, sort of. <laughs> so if we fought, I would have won, naturally. He is a child. Alex would but try I was the him. adult in the situation and gave up. What'd you say, Jason? So Alex will try to hail him in the Atarian. Okay. Um, although he turns to look at you, it's he doesn't show any, any reaction to the actual words. I'm going to try to pinch one of those vox between my fingers and tug on it. What? <laughs> That's her. I don't um, think he hears you. He's the, in his own world. The the vox of Yavelsi have this unique uh, um, shape, kind of spirally, kind of curly. Um, and you, that makes them, I guess, that's something I never considered, but it makes it really easy to grab them. Uh, so you pinch like on one and sort of like tug a little and bit, and, and, and you know it. his his face his face pulls forward a little bit with your motion. Um, he he seems surprisingly unfazed by this, so they're like he he then begins to pull back a little bit. Yeah, I think Pontifex is gonna let go and like put the hand on his chin like the thinker. Um. Mm. On, wait, on your own chin or on the... No, on, on his own chin. <laughs> he, like, once the guy pulls back, he lets go of his face and, like, is putting okay. his hand on his own chin in, in the okay. thinker pose. All right. Mm. From context, it was ambiguous. <laughs> uh, you don't happen to speak common, do you? Or plurn and whatever, uh, something. Like, do you understand me? The Yavelsi... Um reaches down to this this uh, the the only belongings on him this kind of like uh, satchel sort of thing um and pats it uh, is that a yes um then this he is... yeah uh, go on he opens it um and uh, um looks inside and searches searches for something and pulls out this um a wand uh a this wooden uh and a beautifully carved uh wand with a small um at the end of it it's shaped like a ah uh, where do i put this it, it's shaped it's sort of like egg shaped uh at the end of it and it's made entirely of wood and uh, as he as he pulls it out, he holds it up like to show it to you. I also pull my own wand. Hey, Granny you used one of him. those. <clears throat> hey, I also have one of these. Though I doubt yours is as impressive. Uh, what one do you have? Oh, do, is the it one who smiles? smiles? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Evelsi holds up the wand, uh, like like the the way he's he's sort of like pushing it a little bit further towards you. 
I guess I'll reach to grab it. Does it seem like he's handing it to me? Um. Yeah, you you grab it, and he holds on to it. He doesn't stop you from grabbing it. He just doesn't let go of it. Uh, okay. I guess since I have the wand, can I activate the wand? I don't know what it does, but I'm just gonna do it. Uh, his wand? Yeah, the wand I'm holding. Okay. <laughs> I'm also holding on to it. I guess I don't know. I don't think you need to know what a wand does to like use it, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just going right. to try it. So, yeah. as you um, attempt to uh, roll another kind of check. Sure. Something interesting is going to happen one way or another. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you jerk. <laughs> Let me check that dice number up. <laughs> oh my god, between you and of Austin, all the you're... things to Nat 20, this is very <laughs> in character. Grabbing someone else's wand and just activating it to find out what happens. Okay. So, uh, Pontifex, you can, uh, what's the highest level of spells you can cast? Is it third? Uh, yeah, I have third level slots. Slots. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that will do it. Okay. So, you may choose any spell from any spell list, from any class list, up to level four. No, three. Sorry. Up to level three. Uh, and that is a spell that you know and you can cast for today. Oh, what the hell? Oh, fuck. <laughs> You can also feel... Um, Pardon my French. You can feel that the this kind of uh, uh, wand requires attunement, and there's more to it. Um, and since you're rolling at 20, I'll give you... Uh, I'll give you... I'll, I'll tell you what it is, but it doesn't mean you can, like, use it now. Um, sure, I'm not attuned, yeah. So... Uh, this one works as a focus for your for your spells. Uh, it increases your spell attack bonus and your uh, save DC of your spells by one while you're attuned to it. And you can feel that it contains charges. Um, but the, the charges you're... As you activate it, whatever they do is something that doesn't take hold. Um, perhaps because you didn't quite know what it did. Um, Mm -hmm. you, you, you get a feeling like the uh, the one can do something to your spells as you cast them. Oh. What the hell? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess if he like, activates this thing and, you know, has a brain blast or whatever <laughs> of just knowing how to do something that he otherwise would never have been able to do. Uh, I think that he straight up, like, stumbles and, like, falls onto his butt. And is like staring up at this at this being with a newfound reverence. Uh, 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 Talex, do you speak uh, this uh, this person's this uh, 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 things uh, language? Tekka might have a better chance. Maybe uh, Tekka, you before? need to speak to him like now, now. <laughs> Please. Oh no! Oh, Sid? Oh, oh no, no, he has already oh, taken no. him out. <laughs> How long has he been gone? We lost Sid! It's been a while. Or maybe it's just lined up this way. Oh no. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes! Yeah. Okay. yes. Hi! Weird. Oh, hi! Uh, yeah, oh, no, Tekka will you... just kind of hold up his hand to the stranger, see if he gets a reaction. His hand? Yeah. Um, the man looks at Tekka's hand, and there is no reaction other than that.
Uh, this uh, this individual, uh, I I know not if it is him or if it is uh, the wand he has, but in either case, uh, is incredibly impressive. Can I have an uh, insight check from everyone? He can do things that are not normal. Everyone? Yeah. Uh, Jason, you need to roll better, man. It's ever since the tower was taken away. <laughs> Don't worry, we all got this. <laughs> My magic tower. Tacos and that 20s. Not with a 20 and then a 19. Of course. <laughs> this is just my time. Okay. Someone said incredibly powerful <laughs> magic wand. Time for me to shine. <laughs> <laughs> um, those of you who have met Yvelsi uh, uh, before, you, you, you know that uh, um, besides the reputation of being merchants, uh, uh, it, it, it's well known that their own language is so deeply different from anyone else's, even on the Dari itself, uh, that uh, it's really difficult to communicate with them. But uh, generally, Yvelsi make an effort. The one you met had like uh, a series of words written on, on a piece of paper and he, he could communicate with basic gestures, but uh, this man seems like uh, he even lacks that. But uh, Tekka, at the very least to you, it seems like the way he's holding up the wand, perhaps that's up for trade. Hmm. Pontifex. Yes? If you are interested in this one, offer an item. Eh. Uh, what? Well, uh, just. Uh, uh, he's going to give it away? Are you sure? That sounds, it seems absurd. Give something valuable to you. <laughs> Are you sure it just has to be of importance to me? What about the like actual material value? We will not know until we try. Okay, yeah, I'll try. Uh Artifex is gonna like uh, pull up, he pull up in his bag, like he knows exactly what he's going for, and he's gonna like hesitate for a moment. Uh, and he's like, oh, no, no, it's worth it. it. This is. Oh, but is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. And he's gonna pull out his dragon chest set. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I see that. Did you even finish your game? <laughs> no, we haven't finished the game. <laughs> I see that as for fade, just yeah. so you know, point of fact. <laughs> yeah, that's <what> <laughs> You're holding out your, your your dragon chest set to him. My very old, very worn dragon chest set. I think it's made out of like really nice materials, but they're just, like extremely yeah. old and dated. What, what is it made out of? Uh, I think his is made out of like, uh, like the whites and blacks are things like, uh, like marble and like obsidian. They're like, uh, like uncommon stone, not gem, but like, uh, uncommon and like probably used to be extremely polished stone. And like the, the board itself is like some super high quality wood, but all of it has just been like super degraded with time and with use. Like, uh, like the tops of the pieces are like worn in a little bit just from all the hand contact over the centuries and the like the wood of the board is like, it seems like it's been heavily scuffed and then like re-oiled and then heavily scuffed like over and over and over which has been worn down and like tried to be maintained mm -hmm. but never like restored okay so i think it's made out of really nice materials that have since lost all material value all right it's worth about a gold piece <laughs> <laughs> Pontifex, with tears in your eyes, you hold up your most uh, prized possession to this uh, pale Yevelsi. 
Ooh, oh, of note, it's missing a piece. <laughs> the one you used for writing? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> looks upon it and uh, pulls the wand a little bit closer to himself. I see you wish to crush a man where he is most vulnerable. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this Yavelsi, what is he wearing? Does he have like any jewelry on him or is it just sort of like the painted box? Uh, like clearly the, there's some sort of like artistry that he's interested in, uh, sort of trying to get a feel for what that is. Yeah. Yavelsi normally wear um, really heavy clothes. They are very cold in the climate of the peninsula, and this one, at least in this regard, is no exception. Uh, so his pelts are uh, they're red, orange, and yellow, these, these pleasant warm colors. Um, and he, he seems comfortable in that much amount of clothing. Uh, there is jewelry. There, there's some uh, there's some metal and some gemstones that are like pierced into his box. And uh, these these dots and stripes on his box, they're very clearly like painted on and not like a yeah. natural thing. Okay. I don't know, do we have anything covered with lots of gemstones or anything like that? Just Talek say that out loud. <laughs> no. Okay. <clears throat> just ask him what he's want. I, I would just about part with anything. Alex is just taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> So we we just recently got a couple of things that we could consider. Um, there's that potion of growth, and then there's the ring of of warmth that mm -hmm. maybe this this person would be interested in if he's wearing like. But but I, I know Tekka has interest in the ring of warmth, but I mean we could show him the potion of growth if if anyone wants to. If no one wants to hold on to that one. I mean, the Pontifex is literally about to vomit everything that he owns onto the floor, <laughs> so... I think that is a fair trade for what we're... for what we could get. That is me saying that. <laughs> I'm not broke. I don't... I mean, Pontifex has, like, six magic items or more on him, and, like, I'm about to throw all of them into a jumble, like a bun bundle pack. <laughs> <laughs> I want these. <laughs> There's basically two things that I won't give this person, and that's like the the special prism that is like my birthright and my my little like golden brass orb thing that he carries around with him all the time because that's my class. So <laughs> you can't uh, have that. Everything else is for sale. With with Pip's insight check, can he tell that like Pontifex is like drooling at the, for this thing <laughs> uh yeah, yeah it's, it's not yeah. subtle <laughs> okay he's uh, like he's still on the floor pip would probably lay some things out then just to just to to demonstrate to this yavelsi some of the things that they could possibly have to offer him he'll he'll uh take out the potion of growth and just sort of swirl it around in the air and then like make himself look a bigger just sort of like uh, <laughs> putting his arms out and stomping on the ground and then he'll mm -hmm. put the he'll put that potion down and then he'll pull he'll pull off his hat and pull a rat out of it and then send the rat scurrying off elsewhere and then show that the rat was empty the whole time <laughs> um okay Oh well, yes, I, uh, that, yeah. that is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Pontifex is just going to start pulling everything out of his bag and laying it out on the floor. Right. Take out the uh, the Armabastu whistle and just sort of blow in it lightly. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, all of Pontifex's possessions minus is uh, the the orb and a gemstone, right? Uh, minus the orb and the gemstone. Uh, 
and his staff that has the diamond on it. He's like holding on to that, but he seems like he'd be able to give it away if he has to. <laughs> okay, what, what staff is that again? Uh, it's just I have a I have a diamond that's worth fifty gold that I have to have for my chromatic orb spell, and so I just flavor that. Is right, that's the right, staff right. that Pontifax has on his character? It's just mm. a regular quarter staff, but it has that fifty gold like clouded diamond in the top of it. Okay, Pip. I'm just checking your inventory. Are you showing everything except then uh, something? Or um, me? Yeah. Oh, uh, just showing the potion of growth, the whistle, and the hat. Okay. Oh, and like Pontifex's pearl and his world point card are probably still on him. Actually, Pip would also show a talking doll <laughs> and take it out. <laughs> right. and, and... It's the one. Uh, uh, it's it's one that's a little muddy from when Fortis kicked it in the mud this morning. Yep. <laughs> Okay, let's see. No one wants to keep him. <laughs> As uh, the Evils carefully looks at everything on display, and he puts his wand back in the satchel. Quick question: Is my is my jar of month old uplu fruit? Is it moving yet? Sure. He will grab the jar and pull it back to himself. <laughs> Ex except for this. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Eves has put the wand away. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I look like toss my coin purse on the floor. <laughs> How many coins? Something. He has to want oh. something. And okay. any, all of it. <laughs> uh, he does not appear interested in any of the items you've shown him. So he's included several magical items in that too, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> like a lot of them. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the Wand of Smiles, the... Uh, uh, the magical sequin robes, the mask of the observer that we got, the the <gasps> sending stone bells. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, whoa, all whoa, of that whoa, is whoa, in whoa, the pile. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that mask that Pontifex was like drooling anyway. over. That's <laughs> yeah, in I don't the think, pile. I don't think we wanted to tell us. I don't think we wanted. Um. Whatever. During during the presentation of any of these things, did the expression on the Yavelsi change whatsoever? No, he is he's very stoic, very neutral. Pip will just sort of like look him in the face and give like a big shrug, like, we don't know what you want. <laughs> uh the Yavelsi reaches into the satchel again and removes a second item. It looks like an unassuming glass vial with multiple strings tied around its neck and each each strand is of a different color um, he holds it up and he faces towards Pontifex uh, oh I don't ha I suppose I has a way to okay yeah he's gonna clamber up off of the floor and hold his pearl up to it, and I'm going to use my class feature to instantly cast Identify. One minute. Or rather, it takes a minute, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I keep forgetting that. Based on the fact that the Yavelsi stands there, um, just lets you maintain your your, uh, your contact with uh, the bottle, he seems to have understood that you can understand what these items, do, uh, what these items do. Mm. Um, so, uh, this bottle... Its name is the Blood of the Wild. It requires attunement, and uh, it's empty, but as a bonus action, you can pull on one of its strings. Each color will do a different effect, and you can spend a spell slot to fill it with a certain liquid. The level of the spell slot... <laughs> Thanks for that. Ah, right under a window. <laughs> the level of the spell slot... Um, 
determines uh, the kind of liquid that will fill the, the bottle. Uh, a first level spell slot can produce ale, olive oil, a potion of healing or a potion of climbing. A second level spell slot uh, can fill it with mead, a potion of fire breath or a potion of greater healing. A third level spell slot will produce wine, a potion of flying or a potion of superior healing. And you can tell that there is more to it, but your magic would, is not able to currently uh, figure out what would be beyond that. Uh, this can be done once per day. <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> it's really good wine. <clears throat> uh, this, this person's possessions are incredible, frankly. And they seem to be made for uh, m magically inclined people. Uh, so I, either he is incredibly powerful or he has met some incredibly powerful people that have been willing to part with these things. Even this glass vial is incredibly impressive. As we lost him. <laughs> we, we lost him. I mean, maybe his wares are just a bit out of our league for now. I, 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 I want it, I need it. Uh, Pontifex, <laughs> it's, Alex, it's, I need it. it's clear that he has moved on to an item that, as impressive as it is, it's less powerful than the previous one. Perhaps to scale it down to uh, the wares that you guys are offering. Um, and he does seem to be eyeing some of your items. As a... Okay, this is this is like I, know, I guess on a meta level. Pontifex is trying to go through his head. Does anyone else have something magically valuable that he can remember? It's a belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the belt. Right in front of Kazumir. Just <laughs> give it away. Uh, aside from the dolls. Pontifex uh... is about to reach for the seed. <laughs> at this point, so I'm trying to think of anything. I do Let's be honest, this. okay? Orm has become less useful over the days. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to think we may have to give this guy a rain check. His stuff is too good for us. I have a cursed child for trade. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <coughs> I do have all oh, slipperiness. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Was there anything else like that? Big, I got the bird. The, belt? the what? The the bird, the bird that I've been that did us so much good in the jungle. I've been checking every day. Pontifex. Uh huh. Yeah. The mm -hmm. Yavelsi, uh, with his free hand, points at the mask. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm. Uh-uh. What, what about it? Oh my god. He doesn't say or do anything else. Uh, I, I guess he's gonna pick up the mask. <laughs> Which of the two is this? Uh, what? The because uh, you guys have two masks. Oh, which uh, one was he pointing at? Uh, oh, well, Pontifex only has Pontifex one. Only I have the one, mask of the right. observer, oh. the one that once you shape it into the f another person's face, it can see through their eyes. Okay. The good one. Yeah. Um, Tekka has the other one. <laughs> yeah, Tekka has not shown the mimicry mask. Um, the uh, the Yavelsi holds a uh, hold, holds out his free hand, and then also holds out the bottle in the other. Oh. Uh. Uh, uh, Teka, how do you say uh, uninterested in Yavelski? 
How do you say I want the egg stick? I cannot help you. Telex, what is the pantomime for egg? <laughs> Uh, actually, there's a chance Telex might know that, but I don't, I don't know if it would actually translate. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, with, with that, with that rule from before, it's said that, uh, B uh, Pontifex, uh, Tekka, and the Brook, uh, at least you just saw the Yavelsi pointing? So you figure that he understands that gesture. Um, so perhaps you, you point at his hatchel and he puts away the bottle and takes the wand back out. And yeah. Well, I'm... This is... This is, this is uh, let's just make it a persuasion check. Uh, from Pontifex, and it doesn't, uh, of course, it doesn't involve words, but it's just a stare down that follows. Can I give a quick prayer and guidance myself? <laughs> <laughs> Pray to whoever is willing to help. Uh, if you attempt to cast a spell in front of him, he does not react. He does not stop you. Well, I will guidance myself on this one. In the middle of this stare down, you just start to pray. <laughs> I'm an inspiration. How do you how do you do this? Um, let it go and then just press R, and that will randomize the rule. <laughs> well, oh, okay. it's a natural twenty. <laughs> I'm my best friend, inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a name like that. And what like was the that, before? A two. So, so a it's 25, a 25 total. total. <laughs> <laughs> and there has to be something, anything, except for this, uh, and this, and this. And frankly, you don't want this. <laughs> He's pointing at the ooply jar. <laughs> <laughs> so with his free hand, he points uh, at the diamond on your staff and at the mask. One of us can look back at it. <laughs> Everyone, I, I need it. <laughs> I won't be able to sleep. Where's the diamond? Uh, the diamond is on the end of Pontifex's staff. It's it's like this big ass like it's a it's like huge for a diamond, but it's like really clouded, uh, and it seems like the base of it is like embedded in some kind of black stone that seems to be the exact same stone as his chest piece. It's oh. like a diamond that's embedded in obsidian that seems like rather than cutting the diamond out, they just straight up removed the node from the wall, and he's yeah. like attached it to the end of his uh, of his staff. The hmm. mask. I mean, it sounds super useful, but I, I mean. This but wand he can't sounds understand what you're saying, right? <laughs> if if this wand that does what I think this wand does, I could do what this mask does, but every day and like <laughs> to whoever. Uh, this wand is incredibly useful. Uh, whatever offer. value this mask has, I could do this mask thing, but without the carving of faces, I could just do it. Well. Sounds like a good deal for us then, right? <laughs> I think. Is clairvoyance a title spell? Uh, I think clairvoyance is scrying third. for. It is a third level spell. And what level is scrying? Fifth. Okay. Well, one of these days I mean, it seems you know, to scale with the with the user. So the the one sounds amazing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pontifex will like uh, hold up the mask and then like point to the to the diamond that's like embedded in his staff. Uh, this. The FLC uh, also points at a wand of smiles. <gasps> oh, you bastard! 
<laughs> I think uh, Pontifex is going to uh, to try to remove the diamond from his staff, and then uh, he's gonna like hold the wand in his hand. It has been a good road, though you have never worked. <laughs> so, I suppose you will have one last shebang. And he's gonna hold the wand up to his own face like the barrel and pull the trigger on his own face and choose <laughs> to fail the save. <laughs> and yeah, I think his face just horribly and uncomfortably disfigures into like a joker level smile, but the sadness and tears never leaves his eyes. <laughs> uh, it's like a combination of the masks of comedy. <laughs> on a bra. <laughs> okay. And hands it over with a giant beaming smile on his face. <laughs> the wand, the mask, and the diamond. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the VLC grabs all of those uh, in just like like an armful uh, up against his chest and he hands his wand over to you. <laughs> oh. Actually, I have a blanket, like a, a thick quilted blanket. Uh, I think I will have bundled all of that up into like a picnic bag. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want it to be hurt, you know? And yeah, he'll, he'll hand it all over in a cute little bundle. Pontifex, in return, you have a, um, a wand. I have a wand. I think he's, like, holding this thing like some kind of holy artifact, like, afraid that, that it could just turn to dust in his own hands. I'm not worthy. <laughs> but I have it. It is mine. All Precious. of the powers unknown to me, all the things I could never be. Yeah, Suddenly in the form of a wooden egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm immediately going to like press the pearl to it. And I'm going to sit there and the world outside is shut off for the next 11 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> he also just patiently puts away... Um, his newfound belongings in the satchel. I think Pontifex is even gonna like point at him and then like slap the ground next to him, like a have a seat <laughs> type of <laughs> gesture. <laughs> um, however, he does not. He, once he's done putting away the items, he simply turns around and resumes walking in the direction he was going before. Okay, it is fine, it is fine. He could not escape if I did not want him to. I am almost a god, potentially. <laughs> okay. I am almost a bard. I... No! I messed it up! Uh... <laughs> Don't you dare mess up my wand! I, I, I might have messed up the one. Okay, I think he works. I think he works. So let me just toss this. No, I still messed up. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I will add it to your inventory. What is it called? What's it called? No, I'm scanning fervently. What is it? Oh, I have to remove my diamond and my wand of smile. No diamond. No wand of smile. And the, what was the other one? The mask. The mask of the Observer. Mask. Yeah. Delete, delete, hmm. delete. Do you have homebrew enabled on your card or sheet? Uh, I, let me turn it on. Okay, that's, that's, that's why. I do not. <laughs> I cast the Wub Orb. It is going to chase him down and shatter his bones. Okay. You should have the Heart of the Weave in your inventory. 
believe I don't. Let me refresh. That's such a cool name. <gasps> oh, just the color is getting. Is oh. it purple? No, it's better. It's what? It's orange. <laughs> it's yellow. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Okay, Legendary. let me let me read. Uh, 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 the, the professor is in rapture for a moment. <laughs> uh, did this guy take all of my money as well? Because he can. <laughs> <laughs> he did not take your money. Chase no. him down and give him all your money. <laughs> I'm still, my Wait. coin bag is just still on the ground, scattered with everything yeah. else. There's like a small fortune on the floor. Like, Fortis is trying to be helpful by picking up the coins and putting them back in the pouch. <laughs> yeah, Pontifex totally would just like, splash it on the ground. <laughs> 264 gold just blasted all over the floor. Sure. <laughs> okay, well, you hold on one. I got a. Uh, that first uh, line's book. Has it and recharges. recharges. Focus Pontifex and says uh, Water holds. When you cast a spell. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Matt, 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 Matt. Hold on. Can you, can you like mute yourself during this? <laughs> oh, I can't yeah, hear sorry. Sid. <laughs> It's kind of funny though. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's how it's actually <laughs> going. Like, yeah. Work really well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sid? Yeah, Tekka uh, looking at Pontifex, so focused on this one. It says, "Water holds wise eyes, greeting both light and the dark." Holy shit, you guys! <laughs> Casimir yeah. is Whatever looking at Tekka. Whatever you just Tekka said, just it, like it's <laughs> better than that. Confusion. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is absurd. I feel, I feel guilty. It like is... I should have just given him more and also like pledged him my life for like fifty years. It's really good. Hey. Is there a word? In Plurnen, uh, that could express how good this is. I don't think there is. I'll trade you for it. <laughs> uh, sure, just uh, give me the noose on your neck. Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> no, it's a good deal, I promise. Well... Okay, so you're lost. Just walks no away. worries, no, I don't want to pressure you. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcastic little shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, we went through this last line of it is like giving me heart palpitations. I might need to take a breather. <laughs> yeah, okay, team, this is, this is like crazy, crazy. I'm going to try my best to not power game the hell out of this thing. <laughs> hmm. You're going to try uh, not to power game with a legendary item? Yeah, I guess uh, basically uh, from from this day forward, um, if we need to, uh, material components that have gold values are no longer consequential. Uh, up to 1500 gold. Um, if anything costs 1500 gold to cast, it doesn't anymore. Uh, also, I, I just know every spell. I, I, I just know a spell from any class, all, all of them. Uh, and I can change it every long rest. The material uh, component thing only applies to spells you cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there is no spell that I can't cast once I get right. a spell slot for it. I'm just saying you can't, uh, like, let someone else do it. And then the bottom line says, uh, there's more. This, this thing gets better. That's Over good because you're the only caster in our party. It has so. additional magic. <laughs> Dang. But I don't know what it is yet. It's going to improve. Yeah, it's a legendary item that requires attunement by a wizard. Wow. Yeah, seems this good. Is, yeah, it good seems pretty deal. cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this with the uh, 50 gold rock um, uh, 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 claymation thing and. Uh, well, I did lose the Wand of Smiles, so maybe this was a fair trade. <laughs> yeah, holy crap. 
The effects of the wonder smiles have long since faded on you, but you're still smiling. Yeah, it's just... No, I think it's equally as creepy as it was before. <laughs> a frog is giving a toothy smile. There's just so much potential to this. this I feel like my life's work has just been invalidated by a, by a piece of wood. <laughs> Fortis returns your coin pouch to you. Question. Is there any... Like, this is just like a wooden wand that seems to have like an egg shape at the end of it. It's just like a wooden, like a nub it's, thing it's, at the end. Yeah, is yeah. there any like engravings or symbology or anything? like symbolizing that this thing was made besides the fact that it was carved like this wasn't just a branch it was a piece of wood that was bigger and then it was carved okay. into this shape uh there are no symbols carved in it, it, it okay. it's actually very smooth okay well this was made uh, at some point uh, and i I have to know by whom and how. If, uh, any, any, hold on. This egg shape at the end, could one also say this is perhaps seed shaped? Or am I drawing lines that don't exist? A seed is more like... Here, I'm just like... Th this would be a seed shape, right? Right, Like a drop? But oh, this yeah, is here. more uh, like this. You know, it's, it's uh, symmetrical. Oh, you've locked it. I can't move it. I was going to say, I'm a seat right here. Uh, <laughs> it's because it keeps going everywhere. Uh, professor, maybe uh, maybe I should carry the seat for a little bit. Are you sure? I mean, I it, mean it makes sense during for that, whole that transaction, piece of divinity you kept... to reside in the hands of divinity, as I have so recently become. <laughs> you know, or during the whole interaction, I noticed you kept looking down at the... At the amulets. Hey. Okay, but I didn't. Hmm. Look, I'm not going to, to say that I did not have uh, incredibly malicious thoughts that I am now uh, feeling very guilty for. I, I will not deny it, but uh, I, I have become a better person in the past four minutes. <laughs> okay, well... Uh, I'll just carry it for a little while. Okay, sure, 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 sure. You've been... Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the bowl follows it. Oh. And uh, he didn't even take my dragon chest set. What a benevolent being. I could make a religion out of him. I would be interested in learning where he was going. <laughs> yeah, no was. kidding. Or where he has been. Yeah. Just, I mean, I would assume that uh, Plorinan did not have this and then give it to him, seeing as how they are all incredibly racist, but uh, <laughs> that would seem to imply that this comes from here. Um, actually, yeah, I would I would throw that in since you cast Identify on both of the items, because uh, generally I do that with you when you do Detect Magic too. Uh, you can feel that the magic stored in both of those items was the kind that's native to Ladaria. Hmm, Ladarian magic. Mm. Uh, these Yavelsi, are these, uh, are these also like the exiled people that have been sent to the peninsula? No. Okay. The Yavelsi uh, do not live on the peninsula. Okay, these are the actual natives. Okay. Then, yeah, he's putting, connecting dots and saying that this kind of magic, for this person to just be wandering around with not one, but two incredibly powerful magic items, uh, which the other one, you know, wasn't to this capacity, but still, like, absurd. Uh, that either this person is incredibly lucky or this kind of magic is, like, almost commonplace somewhere on Ladaria, so... I have since been reinvigorated uh, with a desire to explore. Okay. 
Uh, Fortis is still holding the coin pouch and then just slowly turns around and uh, since he's uncertain, he just hands it to Tekka. <laughs> Right, uh, sorry for all of this, everyone, but, uh, well, no, I'm not sorry. This is incredible. <clears throat> We've made time for other trades before, so let's just well, get back on the road, This is the trade right? of the millennia, and trust me, I've been here for most of the millennia. <laughs> This is perhaps the greatest trade deal in the history of trade deals. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I'm a bit uh, in, enraptured. Uh. Hmm. I, I imagine that as everyone resumes walking, you're gonna tune to the item on the way, yeah? Uh, yeah. If, if that entails me walking at a snail's pace, then he will do so. You already walk at a snail's pace. I will walk at half of a snail's pace. <laughs> whatever I have to do, whatever inconvenience I have to do to the party, I will do it regardless. <laughs> it's fine. You, you don't have to slow the party down. <laughs> Are you sure? Because <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll attune to this thing. Okay. Huh? And I guess it's already been activated for uh, for the day. I don't, I'm, I'm gonna just come up with what spell. I don't know, it would have been something that he was thinking of in the moment without actually knowing what he was doing. So I'll come up with something. <laughs> sure. Okay. That's... Uh, well, we can skip to nighttime in that case. Uh, I guess nothing else is, uh, of note happens for the rest of the day. Uh, anything I should know about during the night? Can't think of anything. Mm -mm. Uh, I do think that maybe at some point, because uh, he's thinking about his loss of his of his diamond, and he was thinking about his inability to to use his uh, his chromatic orb, which is like his like the signature thing of his calling. Like a, a scribe wizard who can't cast chromatic orb is not a scribe wizard. So I think at some point he's going to try it anyways, but with this wand and, you know, find that it can do the, the gold thing and like it's not lying to him. Mm -hmm. um, it works. Yeah, he can think he like blows a third level on it and, and yeah, does, I don't know, something, some amount of energy, something to like a large tree. Uh, and is just completely content with himself. Just, okay. uh, just to test the gold thing. So uh, every morning I will ask what spell you have prepared for, for that day. Do I decide in the you morning? Have to... Oh yeah, when you, when you finish a long, a long rest, rest, you choose. Cool, 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 cool. So it, it doesn't add versatility where like you, the moment you need something you can... Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a predictive thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. I, mean, I don't even know if this if this works, but this is absolutely what happened. The spell that he learned is Incite Greed. <laughs> From Acquisitions Incorporated, apparently. That's the spell that he knows for the time being. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the number of creatures within range that can see me, I'm just doing it on myself, I guess. For, for, for this particular instance. Uh, so, uh, he knows Incite Greed for the time being. I'm on the wrong document. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Where did I put it? Hold on, sorry, I lost <laughs> my own notes. Okay, here we are. Okay. The following day, um, this happens roughly in the middle of the morning. Um, when you hear the the flapping of wings and uh, um to your left uh, you can see um something approaching uh, a humanoid figure with wings heading straight for you 
just uh just reminiscent of the humanoid figure with wings that we encountered before. Which Talix one? Is my <laughs> old pal. <laughs> yeah, which one? There are several. Uh, the um, uh, the he's not an arch cleric, I don't think, but the the, the really high ranking cleric that was uh, that was talking no. with Talix with the leaf um, thing. Okay. No, no a, a, as it approaches, you can see that it's a Sanara Kokra. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. It is not one you have seen before. Um, but this, uh, um, where is it? Here it is. Um, it's a cocoa with white and brown feathers, uh, um, and, uh, and, and appears to be, uh, lands next to you guys and, uh, looks at Talix and says, uh, Talix Moyer? Uh, hello? Well, That's I me. sure am glad that you made it out of that jungle alive. We've had this to deliver this to you for days now, but we don't we don't do deliveries in there. Uh, sorry, you're you're with the world points. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, uh, here you go. And uh, he pulls out a. It, this is not just a not just a scroll, not just a parchment, but it's a package, and uh, it's. It, it, it looked like it, it occupied most of his of his bag, um, and as he hands it over to you, it feels heavy. All right, uh, yeah, Telix will take it and kind of so like ha like I don't know, hold it in both hands and like kind of size it up. What? How big is um, it? What does it look like? It. It feels book-sized. Oh. All right. It's Tell a, it's a rectangular. Sort of... mm? yeah, you start unwrapping no. it. Uh, the Aircroker also delivers some junk mail to Pontifex. Oh, this day just gets better with time. And <laughs> and uh, uh, then he addresses Pip. Um, he doesn't even address him. He just he just takes something out and hands it to him and. Uh, uh, Pip, you are reunited with your Warpoint card. <gasps> hmm? Oh. Wait, when did he lose it? I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, he tried to send a message to Fortus through Animal Messenger, and he tied his Warpoint card to the to oh. bird's feet. That's right. Oh. Huh. Try not to lose it again. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's it's covered in mud and a little scratched. Just wipe it down a little bit and put it in his pouch. <clears throat> Take care. And he uh, thank you. Flies off. What's in the box? Uh, <laughs> so as you as you <laughs> as you open up your package, uh, you find that there is. Uh, about two dozen pieces of parchment that all seem to be a part of a letter, but it's it's and and they're they're they are um, written on the front and on the back. Uh, but it, it's a little mess, and you're actually not sure which one of them is the first one that you're supposed to read. Um, and as for the book, it's um, it's a, it's a, it's this large tome. Um, with a with a beautiful red uh, c cover, um, that uh, appears to be an Ezinfer dictionary, written <gasps> by Boovin. Written by by Boovin. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, Talix is immediately going to start reading the letter. Okay, uh, and again, uh, it's as we journey. It's, yeah, sure. Uh, there is a lot uh, to what Boovan wrote to you, and a lot of it, a lot of it is about his own studies and how he has uh, uh, moved back to Chipton and what hmm. life is like now there, and uh, just all sorts of little things. A lot of like. Uh, um, Oversharing, and uh, the, and a large part part of it is dedicated to um, 
to how he is almost done with with this uh, uh, as in for a dictionary that he's been working hard on for a long time. And he says in his letters, he says uh, that it's still um, very rough around the edges and not quite finished and a lot needs to be worked on. But as far as you can tell, uh, this is ready for publication. Well, I don't know the language, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka takes one look and is like, no. <laughs> um, now, mechanically speaking, uh, with this dictionary in hand, uh, any, any of you uh, can begin learning as an affair. Any of you doesn't already know it, uh, and of course that will that will take up your some amount of time, and you know we'll be we'll be building up to it, uh, counting all the hours that you spend uh, every day or any day uh, working on it, and that can eventually lead, lead to a proficiency in Azure Fair. Oh, that's so cool! Ooh, then <laughs> are we gonna have like nightly as and Fair lessons? With Tekka's assistance. Anyone who wants to, yeah. Uh, what's the language that the Yavelsi speak? Yavelsi. Yavelsi speak it's its own language. language. None yeah, of us called, know it. It's called Yavel. Yavel? Yavel. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if... Does any Plurden know it? Maybe... Maybe some do. It not... wasn't an option to us during uh, during character creation. I know that. <laughs> and none of the Ladarian ones were. Not Unless you even were a Ladarian, I Uven think. speaks uh, Yavel. Oh, I, I was. Oh, well, do, <laughs> um, do we know, if... know? No one knows. No, but, do yeah, we know in... if many other Ladarians know Yavel other than Yavelsi? Hmm. Um, not that. Uh, well, really, history check. Okay. Uh. Duven, Duven, when he introduced himself, he said he spoke, he understood a splash of Yavel. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> um, well, um. it's called Yavel. It's probably exclusive <laughs> to Yavel. You <laughs> just learned that today. <laughs> Wait, how do, how do people learn languages that aren't made for them. <laughs> Languages aren't made just for certain people. But we're not Ezin. How can we learn Ezin fair? You uh, simply learn to understand the exchange of words. Uh, I know several languages. Talex knows more. Mm. Think of languages uh, less for specific people and more for specific places people who come from one place might know the language of that place and if they go to a different place it is likely a different language the fact that some of them are tied racially is uh, because you know people originate from different places and it is a long long ago perhaps it was less of an integrated society you know Though some languages, uh, um, you guys know, Plurna is very varied, um, are better fit to certain humanoid species as if whenever they have differently shaped mouths. Like, speaking the mm -hmm. language of the Arakokra would be very difficult without a beak. And yet I can. That's one language I can do, because <laughs> I have Primordial, which includes Oren. Hmm. We lost him again? Hey. An incredibly long and You're arduous awesome. process. <laughs> Welcome back. <clears throat> I'm never gonna get tired of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good pun. <laughs> Even if Austin stays quiet and doesn't acknowledge it. <laughs> I'm just made, making sure, yeah, he probably can't hear us. Actually, Talix, how many languages do you speak? I just counted mine, and I guess since Primordial has four of them, if we're being technical and separating them, I speak eight languages. Dang! Yeah, really me. I mean, I basically know five. Okay. Yeah, if, if we're counting Primordial as one and not splitting it up, then I know five. 
Also, oh, yeah. in this context, in, in, in this world, the, the Arakurk wouldn't speak primordial. They wouldn't speak Oran. Oh, okay. Thing. They would have like a, another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, nobody but the Genazi speak primordial. It's their language. Describes. I just decided <laughs> that primordials <laughs> are a very common Maybe thing to describe. It if makes we sense. ever end up on the Sea of Chaos, it might be different. Yeah. Aliens. Okay. Uh, let's take <laughs> let's take a ten minute break while we wait for Austin to come back. All right. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. So, um, w after the um, encounter with the World Point uh, uh, Courier. You spend another night on the road. Wait, what does this roll mean? <laughs> Hold on. Scroll, scroll. Okay. Um, and the day after that, you finally uh, come into view of Erica. From your current position on the northern hills, you can see the octagonal shaped wall built around the colony and the deliberately arranged buildings within it. It's unsurpri unsurprising that the unique Stasialian engineering shines even from this distance, every detail of the colony carefully planned in advance. There was a time when gnomish cities were built between and within trees, in harmony with nature, sometimes to the point to become almost invisible to those who don't know what to look for. But only the oldest of humanoids remember those days. It's yet another, another detail erased by the silent war. Now the country of Sazel prioritizes, over beauty, might and practicality, which Urka and its inhabitants reflect in all aspects of their life. Um, let me welcome you to the colony of Urka. Oh, I love it. I I just see walls. Load, 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 load. <laughs> completely frozen. Oh, no. ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Taking a moment. Damn. I love the. Are, there, are those watchtowers at the doors, or are they just like. No, they're not watchtowers. Okay. Yeah. They are. Right, yeah, the head cannon. This is all actually like proportionate to one another. So like these stalls are like taller than the actual wall, and I love it. And they, they should be a little bit smaller. <laughs> yeah, are the walls like really low? Because you know. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I mean, they're taller, taller than the houses. It's just these <laughs> stalls are gigantic. I love. It. I mean, I mean, the houses are probably really short too, right? Um, the majority of them, yes. Well, most of them is smaller than my dragon chest piece, so. <laughs> I mean, because the gnomes are short, so everything should be short. We can probably I like look it. over. Oh, like, <laughs> can look over the city I like your Thank map. Thank you. <laughs> I have no complaints. <laughs> I'm not making complaints. I'm just asking. Quit if complaining, if Jason. Wait, is this I'm a asking gnome how place? short things are. <laughs> If this is the gnome town and you intentionally shaped it like an octagon, Pontifex is absolutely going to UFC some of these people. I'm going to have to beat <laughs> up some gnomes. You shaped it this way. It's what a god would do. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't have your, your baby minis on the map. All the buildings have interiors? This is... Wait, no did way. you incredible amounts of detail? What? How did you... How are you seeing inside of them? I'm oh, just yeah. looking inside the windows. Oh, there's windows. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, they do. They have like little shelves and stuff. <laughs> roughly the right size. I can't line myself up where I can see in any of them. Really difficult. I can't get on the level. So, 
So, what would you like to do? Oh, we're so small. I love it. Oh, well, we? are there guards at this entrance? Yeah, that's what I was originally trying to ask. Did, like, are we greeted by a bunch of armed guards? Um, in Urka, whenever you start a question with "Are there guards?", the answer is always yes. Great. No. <laughs> um, yes, yes. There's there's guards at every gate. And there's giant fortress in Casimir. <laughs> Is Urka wel welcoming to visitors? Uh, well, I guess we'll you... go to find Certainly out. doesn't look welcoming. Okay, let's go shop for supplies. You are you allowed supplies. Uh, to get in? Without any issues, you, you you tense up a little bit. Uh, every gnome guard has, uh, in in uh, very visibly uh, in view, their um, a uh, one of their the rifles. Uh, and Pontifex, you can almost feel the pain in your leg returning just at the sight of them. Uh, but with with what just happened recently, you feel like you could take them. I could make them very greedy. Which I don't think would actually change anything. <laughs> uh, Pip just pulls out a crumpled piece of paper from his pouch and unravels it and looks at it. And you can see his eyes brighten a little bit as he looks down at the ad for the toy store. And uh, he's just eagerly looking around the city trying to find something that looks just like that. As uh, they're walking around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is... There is an ad uh, uh, an address uh, on your advertisement. Um, so you just proceed, proceed forward. You know it's on one of the main roads, and with the way the, the city is uh, laid out, uh, I feel it should be easy enough to find, uh, even without knowing. Um, you pass by the what is the the heart of the colony, and right there in the middle of the plaza, there is a large statue of a gnome. In this, uh, visibly militaristic kind of garb um it's not life-size it's bigger so it's it's far bigger than all of you you could even see it from a distance as you approached uh passing that the the people working here do appear to be a gnomish majority but the people walking down the streets uh, uh it's mainly not gnomes um there's, uh, the majority of them would be elves, actually. Uh, and then humans, dwarves, uh, an assortment of races. Is the statue King Radix Bilwar? Roll a history check. Oh, no. <laughs> Those words strike fear into my heart, Winther. You don't know who the statue is of. I didn't know if there was like a label or something. <laughs> Should. Hmm. Should I also check? Sure. Uh, but I mean, if you <laughs> if you do check for like a a plaque, uh, there is one. Um, so I'll. It reads, "The Wild Tamer." Hmm. And that's. You don't know any more than that, Totalix. I don't know what that means. So, wait, what does the statue look like? Like, this. I don't know. Um, Is he holding something, or are they. Okay. Like, dressed a certain way. Uh, he has armor um, that, from from this representation in the stone, uh, you can tell it's like beautifully shined um, in 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 mint condition. Um, there, it, the the way he's posed with his hands behind his back, it feels like he has this. Uh, um, the way he carries himself is very uh, regimented. Um, it's. Uh, uh, 
He's dressed, uh, how do I put it, so ostentious, ostentatiously, but also in a practical manner. And is he holding a gun? Yes. Uh, he ha he's not holding it, but he has it on his back. His hair is short, uh, practical. He has a uh, beard and, and mustache. Okay. Well, how long do we want to spend here? I was thinking we just get our necessary supplies and... I don't know, should we rest for a night, or would we be uncomfortable with that? Yeah. Uh, sorry, what time is it, roughly? Already around the noon. Yeah, I feel like there is a bit of a day left. Um, we haven't done much but walk lately, so... Suppose some exploration would be in order. Uh, you, I do think it's a good idea to find a place to stay. <clears throat> if we're going to spend any amount of time here, I, I, you know, especially for um, for Fortus. I agree that we have lived and slept for so long out in the wild that it wouldn't hurt getting a proper bed for once. A bath could be nice. The bath, yeah. Casimir is very excited about a bath. <laughs> Brooke, oh. ever, uh, Brooke, I gotta say, ever since you started talking again, everything you said, I loved it. Yes, great ideas. Huh. A bed would be great. Bath, excellent idea. Well, anyone got any obligations? Uh, objections? To that? Well, it seems like they get a fair amount of... Uh, Foreign traffic through here. Maybe we can find some place that uh, caters to such people. Full-size beds. You're the best guy as well, or best type of guy as well, right, Alex? Huh. Pretty sure you wouldn't mind. Yeah, no, definitely could go for one. I think we all could, honestly. Not complaining, but uh, we've been in the jungle for a while. And uh, we look of it and smell of it. <clears throat> All right. Do you think we need more than one day? Uh, we'll I see if anything we could comes just up. Play it by ear, you know. Yeah. Okay. If uh, if the rooms are in extremely high demand and it is, you know, questionable whether or not we will get one, then perhaps. Planning ahead in, in booking more than one day is fine, but otherwise we could just... I don't know, part of me doesn't think that the gnomes believe in, like, bundles. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Like a discount for buying in bulk or something. Like a Why? cheaper rate for getting more than one day, instead of just buying them individually as you need them. I, I'm so curious about why he thinks that gnomes specifically don't do that. Because the idea of a discount seems benevolent. <laughs> Who are you talking to, Professor? God. <laughs> I thought you have become God. Uh, what? There's more than one God. There's a whole uh, bushel of them, and now the frog is one of them. <laughs> also, Pip, you know, he likes to talk to himself, so that kind of checks out. <laughs> yeah, why are you so surprised? I do this constantly. You should be more concerned whenever I stop talking. <laughs> Pip uh, sort of just raises the cloth over his mouth and ties it a little tighter and uh, look, glances over to Fortis and uh, shows him the, the pamphlet that he has and says, Wanna go? Uh, Fortis takes a, takes a cursory glance at the pamphlet and says, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can come with you. Though I, I mean, I, I, I don't have uh, a single coin on me right now. But I, I that, can come with you. I, I'll, I'll get you something. An alien too. If you need funding, you are more than well. You, I mean, you picked mine out of the dirt while I was distracted. So. Yeah, I, I gave it to Tekka. 
Not not because oh, I want it. It's just you weren't thinking. <laughs> I don't know. Pip, just don't spend everything since we still need some for our friend and Simleolan. Right. Ooh. Well, in any case, <laughs> just take 10 of my gold pieces and just uh, do with them as you wish. Have some fun. You could use it. Is, is this two fortis? Yeah, two fortis. Okay. Yeah. Either um, Pontifex is giving him his own gold or he's telling Taka to give him Pontifex's <laughs> gold. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay. Well, has it into the from Pontifex to, to the child. Uh, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll, I guess I'll get something for, for my brother. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, whatever you wish. Okay. Just, uh, don't leave Pip's sight. I uh, don't, you know, people are desperately, they see a child with a uh, ten gold pieces and they make bad decisions. But if Pip is with you, I'm not worried. Right, I... I uh, won't let Pip out of my sight? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Does that mean that uh, uh, only two of them are going to the toy store? I mean, Salix wouldn't mind checking it out, but first he wants to get supplies. Yeah, okay. Can we uh, I, guess, I guess, yeah. I'm sure we'll probably be there for a, a bit. <laughs> All right. I think, yeah, tech, I will join them, actually. Pip and Fortis. Ah, uh, Tekka, do you want something? I, I can get you something. I would like to see their work. I'll join you in picking up some supplies, Telix. And then, Cass, if you want to, we can look for other phantoms and inform them on what has happened. Now, where does the professor go? Oh, Choose. I'm with Telix, of course. <laughs> I'm giving the children uh, money, and then you do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going with Alex. So, where's the toy store? <laughs> this is, this is the toy <gasps> store. Oh. Oh, that building looks through the important. windows. Looks through the windows. <laughs> <laughs> What's this important-looking building? <laughs> uh, it appears to be like the city hall. You can windows. tell it's important because it's different. Because it's got blankets like hanging off the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, as you uh, as you approach, you, you you um, you believe you're in the right place based on the fact that there is a sign out of this building that reads "Toy Store." In Flernan. Uh, it's in Plurnan, and it's, uh, hold on, it's in three languages. Plurnan, Gnomish, and Sylvan. Uh, a lot of signs here appear to be in multiple languages. At least, well, at least on the roads you've been on so far. Did we lost in again? Oh, no. I'm here. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't for a little bit. Yeah. Um, the the name of the store on the sign is literally Toy Store. Seems fishy. <laughs> toy Store with toys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is the door open or is it? Does it look like the ad? Does it? Does it look happy? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, so there is, there is a, there are toys sitting on the windowsill behind the glass. Uh, so you can immediately see uh, a series of mechanical contraptions uh, uh, inside of here. Uh, they are shaped like, um, there are two that are shaped like birds and the main one on display is a train. 
uh, which Pip has heard about <laughs> from the party. <laughs> Something about explosions coming inside of it that makes it move. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so the the it's a closed door. Pip will knock. Is it uh, is it trapped? <laughs> No explosions happen when you knock. Uh, don't don't try to put your mini on the stairs. It's, just, it's, just, it's not worth it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, sure. Uh, let me. Oh oh oh. Hello. There we go. Oh, it doesn't display. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, it's fixed. I forgot. I forgot I had to do that. No. Oh. Um. The door does not blow up when you knock on it, but you do hear a, a little um, high-pitched, almost squeaky voice, just saying, "Ah, we're, we're open." People open the door and walk in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you open the door and for you try to walk in, but you just stop. You are surrounded by toys. Some are displayed neatly on the shelves, but there is even entire baskets of them uh, just filled up. You can't take them all in at once. Um, you've never seen such a variety. And the majority of them appear to, to be made of either metal or wood or a combination of them. Uh, rather than they, they have hardly any any cloth uh, uh, on them. There is no no plushies or anything uh, softer like that. Um, there a small gnome with uh, bright pink hair, uh, a person far shorter than you, um, waves a hand from beneath a gnome-sized uh, counter and then lowers his eyes back to what he's doing. And without without looking at you, it just says, "Oh, that, take a look around." Oh, Fortis, Tekka, look at this. It's difficult for people to understand why Fortis doesn't seem as excited <laughs> as him. Uh, he does look around and nod and say, "Oh, yeah, um, yeah, maybe there's something here that." That alien would like? Uh, I... I'm... I've never seen so many... So many toys in my life. What? I, I don't even know where to start. Um, Pip just starts wandering a lot around like a kid in the candy store. <laughs> <laughs> but with toys. Uh, and as as he's sort of looking around and he passes by the counter, he looks up towards the gnome. Uh, is this, a, is this a, a male gnome? Female gnome? Uh, a male. Other gnome? It, it is a male gnome with bright pink hair. Uh, he has goggles on his eyes. Um, and he, if, if you want her any closer, he will like pull them up and, and take a look at you and like blink. Really, like, just he just like he squeezes his eyes shut and then back up. He seems to be struggling to see without them. Uh, this is the Pip. most useless list I've ever had, but uh, I'll useless. I'll, <laughs> I'll take a d100 roll from you, okay? Uh, and why is it as, arranged like this? As Pip is just like happily looking around, he he looks up at the older gnome and and uh. He, he holds up the flyer and and says to him, Thank you so much for sending this to me. <laughs> Holding up the flyer? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you for inviting me here. <laughs> the, the gnome squints struggling to like at first see what what is written on it and then he uh eyes widen and he nods and says oh yes yes it's it's uh i'm i'm happy to to have you here you look like you've come from really far just mm -hmm. just to see my store um well no 
but... But I really wanted to. Ever since I got this in the mail... Um... Oh... Wow. The... The... Marbles? Um... <laughs> oh, if you're interested in the marbles, they are... Over there. He points uh, at a basket. Uh, it has a lid on it, so you can't really see what's in the basket yet, but the moment you lift it, hundreds and hundreds of marbles. Pip plunges his hands in there, just sort of like moves them around and uh, sort of does that thing where he picks up a whole handful of them and lets them clack out of his hands back onto the basket uh, or into the barrel and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you roll the 39. Okay. One marble catches your eye in particular, and you hold it up uh, so you can you can see um yeah, you let the line the light shine through it. For the for the um, the majority of it is, is completely transparent, so you can see that inside uh, there is a small chihuahua. What? Is this a tiny wolf? <laughs> it's like a really strangely shaped wolf to Pip. I mean, it looks like a dog, but it's all wrong. <laughs> what happened to it? <laughs> Poor thing. Ford just looks over your shoulder to see what's going on. It's deformed. Um, I, I think we have those back on Plurna. It's just a, it's just a, a, a breed of dog. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, it, babe, it's it's just a dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pip would, would <laughs> go up to the counter and say, um, how much, how much for, uh, how much for 200 marbles? <laughs> <laughs> the... The man looks in Tekka's direction. Um, <laughs> can I can I have an insight check from the two of you? Um, Taka, you in particular are still a little bit worried just about uh, about um, interacting with gnomes. The last, the last, the uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of interactions with them have have gone pretty poorly. Um, but this man seems seems mm, for for one, he's the first gnome you've seen in the entire colony who doesn't have a rifle right by his side um, that you can see at least. So, um, he seems seems fine. You're not getting a sense of danger from him. And as he uh, he answers, but he looks at you um, as if he's assuming that you are his and perhaps even Fortis' uh, um, guardian. And he, he says, well, uh, one marble would be one copper piece. So if you want 200 of them and he's looking again at Tekka sort of you know like you know <laughs> like are you sure <laughs> that you should be getting that many um mm. that would make it 200 coppers for that many we will need 
some way to carry them. Um, we do sell pouches. How how many? Okay, how many marbles can a pouch hold? Well, if you're interested in the largest pouch that we can sell, it can hold a thousand of them. Really? Yeah. How much for a thousand marbles? <laughs> How much for two thousand marbles? How many uh, marbles do you have? I thought. <laughs> well, as of right now, I am not sure, but I do have a, a marble, mar marble counting machine. Okay. So we can find hey, out. 200 marbles should machine. occupy a liter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, if they're, that's if they're packed perfectly. It's like a Santa pouch. <laughs> well, the thing about them being balls is that... Like, it's it's nearly impossible to not package them correctly. <laughs> they just kind of will find their space. Yeah, you know? yeah. In a in a you know flatly formed container or something. Yeah. Um. While well, this conversation is taking place, <laughs> uh, a a an even smaller gnome uh, walks. Uh, out from from a, a, a door in the back, from behind the counter, and uh, um, com comes into the main room and grabs one of the toys, and then goes back in. Uh, she she looks like a, a uh, just a child, um, but unlike unlike the one behind the counter, she, her skin is kind of a this grayish color, and their hair is black. Does she have a gun? <laughs> it, it kind of struck me whenever he said that this gnome behind the counter was the first gnome we've ever seen without a gun. I I didn't realize. I thought it was just the guards. Everyone's packing in this town. Everyone who isn't a, a <laughs> child, yes. You asked, That's... are there guards? The answer is always yes. Yeah, no, yeah, I gun, knew about the answer is always <laughs> yes, and not just the guards. That's correct. <laughs> All gnomes are guards, just some of them get paid for it. <laughs> Open carry for everyone. Ah, so this is the United States. Being a guard is <laughs> just standing no, around the Texas just... of Ladaria right now. The guards have two guns. <laughs> they have their guard gun and their personal gun. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so so little little child gnome comes in, takes a toy, and then goes back into the back room. Mm -hmm. Um I, I actually I'm going to take a, a history check from Pepenteca. Yep. Oh, <laughs> have you rolled anything that's not a 20? Stop, stop this. These are rolls. <laughs> Teach me your ways. <laughs> yeah, your nat 1 to nat 20 ratio <laughs> is like getting out of hand. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's, what, where, where is... I'm 14? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have 14 as well, but I also have 13 at once. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, over twice. Ah, the new vigil. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tekka, the majority of gnomes you've ever seen have uh, very bright and, and unique to you hair colors. Uh, you've seen gnomes with uh, pink and green and blue hair, and your, your understanding of it is that it's their natural coloration. Uh, but the all the ones you met that were on the younger side of things um, have had more muted colors, less saturation, more um, what, what to you would be more normal hair color. Um, and 
well, that's it. I'm just I'm bringing this to, to like your your attention as a player, uh, and Tekka would kind of come to the realization that it seems to be a um, something recurring with gnomes. Hmm. And that's <sighs> it. How many marbles does Pip want to buy? How many marbles does he have? <laughs> <clears throat> Pip, we will still be traveling. Will you carry all these marbles on our journey? We have a... We have a... Um... The man begins to just shovel these marbles into a small machine. And they, as they come out, uh, um, like he just does this loud whirring noise. Um... And he starts sorting them uh, by by color, and it looks like it's I... going to take a little bit. But at the end of it, he has for sale five thousand one hundred and sixteen marbles. Tekka, Tekka, I can afford that. I think one marble for one copper. How much is a silver? Tekka, I need help. <laughs> Pip just starts laying out his coins on the ground, counting. Tekka, <sighs> what is a gold worth? Pip. Tekka, I need to know. <laughs> Tekka, uh, la like, sits down on one knee. <sighs> Pip, a pelican's beak will not be sated, not in spring nor in summer. No matter how many, it will not be enough, will it? You're right. I... I didn't. I never got to have this as a kid, Tekka. When I was young, like you, <laughs> there, there were not many toys, but the ones I had, I cherished. So... Now, if you hold all these marbles, Will you cherish them as if you had one? Mm. I guess you're right. Pick ten, twenty that speak to you. That are special to you. That you can look back on tomorrow and remember this store. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll pick some out. Do you want this do you want this weird looking uh skinny wolf thing I worry this creature is trapped by some magic no like in the snow globe <laughs> oh we I... should really do something about that too <laughs> <laughs> do you believe that it is some toy I'm just gonna try and cast remove curse on the Chihuahua ball. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do that? Yes. Okay. All right. Mark your spell slot. Uh -huh. Nothing happens. <laughs> it's like Granny always told me. Some curses are too deep to be reversed. <laughs> <sighs> I will find some marbles specialty. 
Hmm. Okay. Storekeep. Uh, yeah, that, that's me. I'm Bilzu. Bil... Bilzu. Do hmm? you build these toys? Um... The majority of them? No. But hey, it's a family business. Masterfully done. impressively quick analysis to the point where I feel like you knew this NPC's name before and you've been waiting for this moment. You no, know, sometimes the things just come to me in the moment, you know? Flash of genius. Yes. But only with stupid things. Flash of stupid genius. <sighs> Bill Sue. Then show me. <laughs> oh no! The name is ruined. <laughs> show me your most intricate mechanism. Metal, wood, stone, whichever. Um, well, with your natural 20 on inside from earlier, uh, you can tell the way he looks at you, like for a moment just up and down, uh, he seems to be judging whether you can even uh, afford it. Uh, but after, after just briefly glancing at you, he simply uh, nods and he says, well, uh, it would be that, uh, that toy over there. Uh, and he points at something that's actually, you passed it on the way in. Uh, it's a, um, uh, it's a wooden sculpture of a gnome, and it's, uh, uh life-sized. So it's about the, uh, the height of Pip, slightly, just slightly shorter. Um, uh, but you didn't register that that was even a toy at all. It was, it just looked like a statue to you, but as you, uh, turn back, and with this newfound knowledge that it supposedly is uh, the the best thing that they have made, uh, you you go back to look at it, and after taking a uh, after taking a better look, you realize that this is actually a construct. It's a machine. You can see the uh, the metal joints uh, uh, where where the wooden pieces are attached to one another. Who built this statue? Well, that's my my daughter made it. The one who stepped inside for a moment. Isn't she cute? Impressive work. What Will you demand for it? Well, for a a toy soldier that can uh, walk with you and do your chores for you, uh, that uh, um, he stands up and comes over and looks down on a little tag that was like just attached to the foot of uh, this uh, of this construct, and uh, he says, "Well, this will." It just comes at uh, uh, 1,500 gold. Then it is not for me. It will also do your homework. Hmm. Home. It can make potions then? And it... It's... Is your homework making potions? 
Oh, it used to be. Um. Anyway, uh. <laughs> anyway. How uh, how old is your daughter? I mean, this is this is amazing. I could never do something like that. She she is amazing. Uh, she is only eight. She's eight, and she makes that. She is. One day, everyone in the world will know her name. I, of that, I am no doubt. What what else did she make? Something. Oh, Majority of everything you're looking at right now in here? Everything? The majority. I, I make some stuff. I made the marbles. Ha <laughs> Wait, you can make marbles? <laughs> <laughs> They're not a naturally occurring wonder of the world. Um. I. What? I must, I must see her. <laughs> <clears throat> I must, I must know. Ah. Look, I, I, I think you're a little too old for her. No, what? Not like, no, not like that. I, I want to, you know how, like, when you're eating at a, you're when you're eating at a place and you like the meal a lot, you wanna you wanna see the chef and tell them <laughs> that they did a good job. It's like that, but with toys. <laughs> Real persuasion check. <laughs> Sorry, she's locked in the sweatshop right now. No visitors. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I I suppose it. Uh... That won't hurt. Yeah, I can, I can go for her. Mina, Mina, come here. And uh, for there is no reply, uh, but uh, almost a, a whole minute later, um, the the girl just sticks her head through the doorway. Hi. She looks at Pip. Did you make all this stuff? She nods. You're really smart. She waits silently. I mean, Her expression doesn't change. I mean, to make something like that, he points at the 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 gnome statue thing and and something like that did you make this points at the train uh, <laughs> when you point at the train that's the first time that <clears throat> you can see like the girl's attention actually focusing on what you're saying and she nods a little bit and she says I, I want to build a real train someday I've never even seen a real train someday I mean, ever. Why? Trains are cool. You should see one. Do you have them in, in Ladaria? I saw a train station, but I don't think I ever saw a train. Yeah. It's just... It's just outside. Wait, really? There's one here? Uh-huh. Do, my... do you want to go see it? Yeah. She turns it towards the build zoo. Can I go? Uh, uh. It's a date. <laughs> no! <laughs> Not this character. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a gnome again! <laughs> oh no, again? Is this a recurring Another thing? crafty Austin, gnome. Austin, would you like yeah. to have a conversation? <laughs> it, 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 oh, it's suspiciously similar. <laughs> <clears throat> I finally understand your type, Austin. This one actually <laughs> makes useful things. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
I always knew there was something the I didn't skin. like about you. <laughs> and now I know what it is. <clears throat> oh god, okay. Um, <laughs> Bilzu agrees uh, for her to go to go with you to see the train station. Uh, he just says that mom has to go too. <laughs> you get chaperoned on your date. Dang, there goes your plan to hop a train together. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of here, suckers. <laughs> Where, my... Where's the train? Mm -hmm. oh, no. <gasps> it's, it's not so real. Way. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> She's a werewolf. <laughs> <clears throat> my, my, uh, I, I'm traveling with a professor at like this college back in Plurna. It's like a community college or something. And he 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 told me that like trains run off of explosions. Is that true? Um the <laughs> Mina come 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 uh, walks out of from uh, uh, she was still only sticking her head through the door frame <clears throat> up until now. Uh, but she actually steps out and comes a little bit closer to you and she's uh, she's holding her hands like in front of her together, uh, a little like a little shy, um, and she shakes her head and says, "Well, that's mm, mm, it's not very accurate, but kinda." He's like he's like two thousand years old or something. I think that's well. Old people don't know anything, so if he's two thousand years old, then he doesn't know anything at all. So that's why you're so good at making stuff, is because you're young, and when you're mm -hmm. older, you won't be able to anymore. Yeah. You can't trust adults. Do you want a doll? Yeah. <laughs> I have an extra one. <laughs> Pit uh, takes one of his creepy dolls out. He can talk to you. This one's name is Mordecai. <laughs> she takes the doll. And holds it up, like above her head. I like it. Nice. Finally, someone wants it. But I'm going to change the name. Oh, he won't like that very much. Yeah, he will. I know, because oh. he's mine. Okay. So, where's the train? Um... <clears throat> oh god, excuse me. Um, so, she grabs Pip by him one arm and drags him out of the store. You never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bilzer is left with the pile of uh, uh, marbles. And I'll come he... back for those. Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, because it was, it was about to ask that guy if they were buying. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> as for the others at the market. Um, everything that's in the equipment section of the player sent book is available here. And if there is, uh, uh, and it's at the, at the base price times uh, 0 0.5. Um, and... Anything unusual about the wares here? Like anything more exotic? Uh, what are you looking for in particular? Or like... All things more unique to gnomes? There are a lot of this is going to sound absolutely unsurpri unsurprising to you, but there is there is there are entire stalls dedicated to uh, to uh, firearm uh, maintenance, and yes. uh, um, there are various machines up for sale uh, that fulfill all sorts of purposes, uh, uh, even surprising ones to you. There are machines that cook. Um, there are others that clean. Various, various things for like the house. Hmm. 
How how bulky are these machines? Are they things that we could feasibly carry? Uh, the majority of them, no. Hmm. But, right. well, it seems like, you know, with the bigger the size, the more they cost and the more they do. Uh, but if we're looking for, like, a, a specific, like, purpose, we can see if they have that. Well, let me see. Uh, I'll have to, let me get my rations first. And feed. Mm -hmm. So everything is half the price of what you see on the... In the book. Yeah, I've got... Half the price? Yeah. Okay. Is Pontifex looking for anything in particular? Is Brook? Just rations. I have everything I will ever need. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just uh, like some basic restocking stuff. Yeah, mostly rations. I still have a couple left, but okay. Uh, yeah, this has been a pretty good, Brooke, pretty good example these last like week or so. Of, of we need more rations. Uh, Brooke, Casimir starts talking to like some random people to you uh, you don't recognize them but he's like occasionally engaging with conversations with strangers and sometimes they're just very brief just a five second exchange of information and sometimes he stops and he just has like a long discussion um you, you didn't expect the uh, casimir to know so many people in in urka but uh he seems to be perfectly uh, at ease in this place Can you say the last point again? Ms. Casimir, sorry. Uh, uh, where did you lose me? Um, when you said that while I was looking or buying stuff, Casimir went, and then I oh, lost Oh no! You. The whole thing? Yeah. Uh, he's talking to people. Uh, okay. Sometimes very brief conversations, and sometimes he just starts these long discussions, and you kind of you kind of leave him behind as you're buying things, and eventually catches back up to you. Uh, he seems to know a lot of people in the colony. Uh, he, it appears he has been here plenty of times. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> While. The the three uh, f uh, four of you Casimir isn't buying anything, uh, but well for now. Uh, so yeah, well the four of you are, the, are at the market, and around the time when Pip is dragged uh, by Mina outside of the store, um, the gates to the west, which is this direction, um, you'd see a, a small crowd forming at first, and then very quickly dispersing um, as guards cle uh, get just cleared out uh, and soon a small uh, number of armed uh, gnomes march through uh, visibly these are these are soldiers uh, uh, there's a few dozen of them um, they will walk by the, the toy store and the paper men are forced to, to stop uh, as the crowd is kind of packed uh, on the sides of the road and you can't really move uh, and eventually they'll come within view of also the rest of the group back at the market. And the thing that catches your eye is that you would see that they are led uh, by the man whose uh, uh, statue is in the middle of Erica. And I'm going to call the session here. Ooh. Mm. Oh. Mm. But where is Pip? I'm... He's on a date. <laughs> no! We don't even know where the train is. He's getting hitched. There's no railroads anywhere on this map. It's a subway. <laughs> <laughs> eat fresh. Or maybe it's eat flesh. He's a zombie. Mm. I'll remember you as you were. <laughs> nah, it's okay. If you die, I'm sure. I'm sure I have something I can do with this broken <laughs> stick. Okay. 
to fix it. So, um, we're not playing next week because it's uh, next weekend because it will be Easter. Uh, maybe we can. Uh, I mean, doubtful, but if we can play on a different day, that would be that would be nifty. Otherwise, I'll see you in two. Uh, and by then, I will be uh, cleaning some things up. There's a few magical items in your possessions that I'm going to make like an, an actual uh, item out of. Uh, I'm falling behind on those, and you guys can figure out the remaining shopping, and we can talk about like if you need anything in uh, specific that's not in the player's handbook, or uh, magical items and whatnot. Cool. Uh, we can figure all of that out, and then we can continue cool. from from here in the, in the next session. Sounds Yay. good. Alrighty. 